Sportowe emocje pod koszem zapewnia Anvil, sponsor strategiczny klubu. I would like to start our our day with the this is the beginning of the day, game day. Do you have your own routine game day routine or something right now in the morning or yesterday? Like normal like Oh yeah, I do it's like uh, I have two game day preparations, like the day before the game. Okay. I'll have the I'll do the normal tech, massage going at night, um, watch a couple of Netflix shows and go to sleep. And in the morning of the game I'll just eat breakfast, go take a nap before practice, um, before or after? Before four and after, yeah, and then right before the end, I'll take a shower, just wake myself up and get on the bus and then listen to music. So, do you do it normally? And this is like the same schedule every single game? Every single game. Every single game? Home game. For how many years? Uh, since I was in high school. So, I was in the freshman high school, now, not before practice, after practice, before game, um, shower before game, listen to music on the way there since I was in high, high school through college to so now. What in case something goes wrong? Um, if something goes wrong, I said I gotta make sure I have the same shoes I played in. Um, super very superstitious. I play like the same two pairs of shoes all the time. So if I don't have those, I don't take a shower. I gotta make sure that I have those two pairs of shoes with me all the time. Jim Dobry Hubert, brother. Are you getting a bit nervous when something goes wrong before the game? Or? No, no. I mean, at the end of the day, it's basketball. So I've been playing since I was five years old. So um, I can't really get nervous. Um, it's a game that um, I've been playing since I was young. So if something goes wrong, I mean, I wouldn't like it to go wrong. I like my routine to go as according to playing every time. But if something goes wrong, at the end of the day, it's basketball. So I don't really get nervous. Do you do it nor automatically or you just think to remember, I need to stick to the plan? Yeah, it's just automatic. Um, before every game it's just the same plan every time but if the plan something happens um, if that goes wrong with, with the shoes or no shower or something I just have to make sure that the pre-game routine on the court is the same every time stretch shoot stretch again and then music and then the same thing um, depending on if it's home or away if it's home we are um, talking about the away games oh away game uh, yeah we get after dinner at the hotel we get back into the room um, that's when it starts um, recovery normal tech massage gun Netflix and then What about the bus? Oh, the bus takes about more than two or three hours. Yeah, it's just relaxing, listening to music, um, eating the food you guys give us, you know, something like that. Just uh, get your mind off the game and just rest. That's what the bus ride I use it for. Um, calling people, talking to people at home. That's what I use it for. So generally, like bus trips, like three hours or something, doesn't scare you? No, no, no. What? Well, how it was in Sweden? Because I, I want to ask you about Sweden as well. In this, uh, in this well, village, when I was there for the eight, nine games I played. Um, We took, we went to Yumia. It's like really far up north, and that's 10 hours away. So we did that twice. So that was two bus rides 10 hours away. And then the only bus ride we had that was really close was Stockholm, and that was two hours. But every other trip that I went on, I was out there, was five plus. So I'm used to the long bus trips and stuff, so it's not that bad. 10 hours, so mm -hmm. you had to leave... Uh Not even day before game, but two days, two days or game, yeah. in the evening or something. And like you leave at like one in the afternoon and get there at night, like midnight, close to one, and then rest the whole next day and then play the next day. Ooh. Mm -hmm.
what is the connection between you and uh, one of the players from Sean's Girls Club? Um, Andrew Vine, um, oh, well, I played him in college at Rhode Island once. Okay. So uh, I'm pretty familiar with him. And then last year in Sweden, I played him twice. So I'm familiar with his game. He can really jump, really athletic. So Who won? Oh, we won. We won. We won twice. You mean in Sweden and in the NCAA? In Sweden, yeah. NCAA, they beat us. Yeah, so it was, it was preseason early, so it was fine. But uh, I'm familiar with this game. I uh, know him as a person, so it's going to be fun. Uh, what do you recollect from that game in Sweden against him? Uh, just uh, he's super athletic. I like to block shots. Um, he's very hard to rim. He goes, uh, he goes for everything. Rebounds the ball really well. Um, just really can really play. He's really athletic. So we got to watch out for that tonight. We have to rebound really well against him. Any any tip for our big guys? Did you uh, did you tell anything to Luke or Alex just, or Cavell? I was telling the pump fake and everything because he's gonna try to block every shot. So going when you go inside, it's so pump fake. Get the ball in the air. He'll jump for every single ball. So it's, that's all I told him. There are plenty of guys in Poland right now this this season from Sweden who played in Sweden last 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 uh, year. What do you think? Why? Um, I was just so the guys are here produced in Sweden last year. Um, Merrick Klassen for uh, I don't know. I think he's on. Charten. Yeah, well that team I see him. He's been playing really good. I know him from a while back too. He's been like a kind of a big brother to me. He's older, so but he's in Sweden last year on um, Brados. So he was really, he's like the top scorer. So I, I'm not surprised that he's here. Well, there are about six guys from Sweden. Really? Yeah, I think so. Six guys coming, you know, this last last summer, and this is the first time ever. Poland never brought players from Sweden. Right. This is the first time. I mean, it's, uh, the guys are here probably were pretty good in Sweden and deserve to be in better leagues, so I, I can see why, but they can play. So uh, now it's time to ask you a question. How many offers did you have bef before Anvil uh, uh, called you, before Coach Frasonkevich called you, and what countries were there? I had like four, uh, two B2B teams, um, one in Hungary and one in Turkey. But um, We have to uh, go. <laughs> Oh, how many teams and what kind of teams? Uh, BT, two BTV teams, um, one in Hungary and one in Turkey. But the coach called me, he like broke down to what he wants from me. And I've known, I've heard about him through multiple players in Europe. So I was like, you rather go with a team or a coach that wants you more than that's going to pay you. So that's, that's why I like coach. Do you think you're meeting his expectations right now? Yeah. Uh, a tricky question, I know that. Uh, I think a little bit, yeah. I think um, for my game, he, a little bit. He showed me like uh, what I, he expected, what, what I expected to do. Um, but I, I can do more. Um, it's like early season, and I want to produce more and win more games. You can do more, definitely. But you've been uh, chosen by our fans, the MVP of September. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you comment this? Uh, it's, it's, uh, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the fans. Um, it was a fun, a fun first month. I'm just trying to do what I do and to do my job and get more uh, wins for the club. Practice finished according to your game day routine. So what's next? Uh, just about to go back to the hotel, um, lay down, go watch some video, and eat uh, eat uh, lunch. Eat lunch. And can we talk about it? About our big rivalry against Shons, do you know anything about this? No, I was talking to Coach Brad a couple of days ago. Um, they say this goes back to way back to like 1980, something like that. But I just know Slos has about 17 championships, but the, you guys beat them here in 2003 and stopped their 18. So it's been going back and forth for a while. So in the States, it will come to the Lakers and Celtics. So it's going to be fun tonight. Okay, but that's I also good. know about these two players, um, Gristuk, which is a player from Anvil. You guys are legend. And then... Um, I forget the Schluss uh, name, but I was talking to Coach about it the other day, and he told me about two of the players. So I just remember the one from Anvil, really. Probably he was talking about Zielinski or Wojciech. Yes, yes, that was the one. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what I really know about the rivalry. But that's what makes it fun tonight. It's sold out, so I'm really excited. Amazing. That's the that, that's something you do before every single game. You, you're trying to know, to know something about the opponent. Yeah, you know, when you're in Europe as an American and playing for these teams, there's a lot of history behind them that you don't know. So just trying to figure out who's what and what happened before this and what teams are your rivals and who's not. Uh, it's always a fun time to make the game more fun for yourself. Oh,
Table of their last game about what was that Monday, Tuesday? So I can just watch a full game of them, how they actually play. Because the scout report only gives you so much information, how they actually only the highlights. You don't see how they actually play in the real game. So every game I ask for the actual tape of the team they played prior to us. So I watch that like a couple of days before, and then I'll go to the scout report. Then I'll just do some more research on synergy, which shows you like their misses, their habits, everything. So I, by the time the game comes, that I know. was supposed to be my question. We'll do pay attention to. Uh, just what, like, what they like to do, like when they have the one-on-one situations, what they like to do off the ball screen, if they have nothing, you can't pass it. So this side, so I know in my head, they said, if they don't have this, they're looking for this, and it's repeated clips of them doing the same thing, so you know. And you look at offense, defense, or both? Uh, both. Defense, uh, you can tell how they play defense. They're pressuring you, they put up full court, okay, it's going to be like that the whole game, but if they're not, they're playing tricky half court defense, then they're going to they're read off what the big guy does, so it makes it easier. Can, we, can you point out some kind of uh, details? According to the players from Schlons right now? Yeah, uh, they like to go under our ball screens. Um, they're big, uh, one of their big guys, uh, heavy shows on top of ball screens, and one of them play, is Langer Vine plays deep contained because he's super athletic. So with him, we'll use different plays. Coach has a lot of plays in his playbook for different guys who do different things on defense. So just watching those guards, they like to go under a lot of ball screens, but if they have to, they go over the top depending on what bit or, or five men's in the game. How much does it help you during the game? Do you think about these tactical issues during the game or? It just comes automatically. Oh yeah, well, I mean, once you study it for a week, it's like taking a test. You study for a test for two weeks, a week. Um, by the time it comes, you already you know the answer. Um, you know what they're gonna do. Um, you must. Things may change throughout the game, but people's habits don't really change that much throughout the game. They're gonna stay the same. So as long as I know what they primarily do, they may do something different, maybe once or twice. But throughout the whole for four quarters of the game, they're gonna stay pretty consistent. So. What is, but, but when you do some kind of post-game analysis? And you see some mistakes or something, but you, you should have made. Chikwe <laughs> Kova. And you think to yourself that, oh, I should have done this otherwise, other way. It depends. If you lose the game, yeah, but if you win, um, it's more of like, okay, we'll just, we'll just look at it for next game when we play them at home or away again. So it depends on if you lose, I'll for sure look at the game immediately. But if you win, I'll take a couple of days and look at it here and there. But I'll look at it before we play them again at a different time right before we play them. Just to look and say, okay, this is what they do this time. They might change it up, but just to see um, what they what they did differently so I can know for this next game. The fans will see this footage after game. Unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, but after game. But if you could tell them right now what they should pay attention to watching you playing against this uh, this guards from, from Shons right now. Just how I play defense on them, um, how I study them. Um, Yovanovic likes to go right, so like to cut his right hand, make him shoot tough jump shots. And then um, Kalinda likes to go left, so come up his left hand. And then everybody else is pretty much a shooter, so be there on catch, stop him from shooting threes, and that's it. Are we cool? Yep. Thank you. Of course.
individual defense that was amazing performance I'm not a mismatch at the floor ah, I'm not a mismatch that was that before. was amazing game for Jimmy appreciate it hey this guy this content is quite taller than you it don't matter it what don't matter. what matters heart heart hey wait Where are you? why are you so rush I gotta talk to my dad oh I'm that's that's did that's he watch it. did he watch of course uh, did the whole family watch or? Oh, they always watch every game. My brother, mom, uh, dad, sisters, they all watch it, yeah. So we'll be walking and talking. Okay. 
So what, what about your family watching in the United States? How, how is it possible they watch it? Uh, there's a link to the games. My dad, uh, my brother plays overseas too, so he has all But I think the games are broadcast only in Poland. No, we have the VPN, which you can get at both sides, yeah. VPN yeah. is not legal. Yeah, no, that's not, but we have it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, have it, yeah. they have to manage somehow. Yeah. So what, what, what will your dad tell you after such a game? Oh, just tell me what do you think? I mean, he's a basketball coach for 30 plus years, so he gets up and down. So he's, he's like, good finish, way to finish the game. You guys came back and won. And that's the only thing that matters, we got the win. We were talking about tactical issues. We were talking about mental attitude to game day, routine, things like this. And suddenly the game like this happened. I mean, you are trying, everything is trying, every, everybody is trying in the first half, but nothing, nothing is made. How is it possible to turn around such a game? I mean, with our team this year, uh, not to be cocky or arrogant, but like with our team this year, it's, it's, you have to, you have to, if you're going to beat us, you have to beat us for 30 minutes straight. You can't give us any 20 minutes, any room to come back and win because in the first half, we didn't play our defense. We didn't make a lot of shots. But the thing is about us, can you keep scoring against us every possession? And then towards the end of the game, we tied it up. It was hard to score against us. We turned our defense on. We play Luke at the five, we switched a lot. So it's saying, like, if you're going to beat us, you have to beat us for 30, 40 minutes. You can't give us any time to come so back. Do we like such a game by tactical changes, by adjustments, or by mental? Another, I don't know, some kind of click switch? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think a little bit of everything. Uh, for sure, tactical, coach changing things at halftime, how to play uh, certain people on ball screens. Uh, Justin's got up to. Justin got up to a quick start, so we changed some things on him, make him put the ball on the ground, make him make more plays. Um, but also um, our attitude mentally, um, we came out flat and then our second half attitude was we want to win. We want to keep all this 5-0, and 4-0 oh, record going. So to play, uh, we had to turn our defense up and play how we usually play. Okay, the, the coach got a question. The coach got a question on the press conference. Did he, did he need to scream? Did he need to shout? And he said that there is no need, there is no need for such a thing, to scream, to shout, because my team they know. They know how to play and they know how what to change. Right. Um, coach doesn't really yell or scream at us. Like he, he'll yell at us if something's going really bad. Like at halftime, he was he jumped on us, but it wasn't crazy. He just we know how to play. We have veterans. We have Camille. We have Shimon. We have KD James. They all played for years. I'm young, but I know how to play basketball still. And they helped me. So it's it's like we have guys who know how to play basketball. So at the end of the day, he lets us play. and We're gonna figure it out. And like we did tonight. Offensive, offensively, we got two points in the first half, probably two points or maybe four. Mm -hmm. By the second, it's everything everything changed. You know, it's a, it's a basketball. It's a game of flow, a game of runs. Um, first half, I had to feel out the defense. They play a little different defense on me, um, trapping a little bit, not letting me get downhill. So in the second half, coach drew up plays and made plays for me to get where I want to. And then got, I, I got my rhythm at the free throw line. And after that, you see one go in, oh, yeah. score, it just keeps on going. Probably so. the first free throw free throws uh, in this season. Yeah, probably, yeah. probably, probably. When you made that uh, one of those triples in a the, in the, in the crunch time, you know what the KD did? Yeah, he put he the just, hands up like this. No, 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 it was later. It was oh. later, but before that, no. he just turned his head into my camera and he said, this guy can play. Or something <laughs> like this, we need to check it. Okay, I want to see that. I want to see that. Um, but um, KD, he's a, he's a veteran. Um, he's 34. He played everywhere in the world. So when I came in, he took me in as like a little brother, and he's been like that ever since. So like every time I score, do something crazy, he always hypes me up. So it feels good. And a few words because it was impressive. Defensive stops were impressive in the second half, and especially what J Jimmy, what James did against this big guy from uh, Turkey, from, mm -hmm. from Shlonsk. A few words about about uh, him. James, people uh, were down on James before the season. Um, James was hurt. He wasn't fully fully healed, fully activated yet. And James has played Euro League, Euro Cup. He's played everywhere in the world. So it just, this is a game for him to get a rhythm. And when he's at the four and he starts making shots, it's really hard to it's really hard to defend him. And on defense, he's big. He's six six, two thirty, and he's hard to get by. So when he's playing defense on you, you have to really make a move. He made it tough on the Turkish guy tonight. Five zero at the beginning of the season. That couldn't be even better. Uh, it's just it can't be anything better. Um, but I, after the first couple of games, I think teams are starting to take us serious now. It's like we came back them down 20 something on the road um we beat some of the best teams in the league so uh, i think teams start taking it serious now <laughs> uh -huh.